Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Wright, it's a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in my latest demonstration video of our recently developed wax scope. Now, the, the pre-procedure um, video there was taken with the iClearscope endoscope and now for the procedure I'm using our wax scope. Now this is of a very complex uh, case. Uh, this patient has to attend every nine months and the reason for that is that they have a chronic uh, impaction of very dry abrasive earwax. Um, so the surface of this wax and keratin, I should say, there's a lot of keratin there, it's very abrasive, it's very rough, uh, it's almost like sandpaper. So for that reason, it's very difficult to remove because the patient can feel it um, against the canal wall and it can sometimes be a bit uncomfortable. Therefore, with this particular patient, uh, we always recommend them to use some drops prior to attending just to see if we can soften the the surface, but despite the patient using drops for a few days, the surface is very, very rough still. And in addition, once I remove this um, large plug, the patient has very sharp and um, uh, very uncomfortable for him, shards of dead skin. It's almost like glass in the ear. And you'll, you'll watch me um, not only remove the, the this very hardened keratin and wax, but also the shards of dead skin, including on the eardrum as well. Now. You can see the oil in there and it has lubricated it some slightly but when you've got wax and keratin this hard it's sometimes very difficult to get a suction grip and the slight problem is, is that you can push this uh, further in because you're not getting a grip with the suction probe you've got to really hover it over the surface and if you put too much pressure against it you're just going to be pushing this plug further in and impact it against the, uh, the, the eardrum and the patient was quite astonished at the end of the procedure. They actually um, got some of this plugs of wax and skin and rubbed it between their fingers and they saw how hard it was. Now, this is uh, a very good case for me to do the wax gate because it's one of the more, more complex ones. Um, typically, I don't recommend my clients having to use any drops prior to attending, but I've probably got one in a one in hundred, for example, of clients that I do recommend to use drops because I know it's going to benefit the procedure and uh, without using the drops, it's going to be very difficult. Um, so it's a real good test of the wax scope this was. Now, if anyone, um, more so people who um, have never used an ENT microscope or uh, uh, members of the public who, uh, so viewers, subscribers who uh, don't perform ear wax removal, and uh, if they're interested to know what an ENT microscope looks like, this is a, a very good uh, example of what the ear looks like when you examine through uh, an ENT microscope. Um, in fact, I've got an ENT microscope and I'm very pleased with the wax scope in terms of its optics. It, for ear wax removal, it's, I would put it on par with, a, with an ENT microscope uh, in that respect. So um, we just used an ear hook there just to chisel this wax and bring it forwards. And I'm using a, a 4.25 millimeter speculum here and we've got four sizes in total. We've got a smaller one, which is a 3.5 millimeter speculum. We've got a larger one, which is a five mil, and an extra larger one, which is a 5.75. That's more for mastoid cavities. So you can see we're bringing this slowly outwards. And we're just, just mopping up some of this debris near the entrance. Now this patient's entrance of the ear canal is slightly um, narrowed and if you're using an endoscope you would need to use the endoscope to stretch the ear so you can see here we're just dilating the ear and I'm just getting this dry wax keratin in focus and it's actually some of it's on the patient's eardrum so we just stretched the ear open I just dilated it with the speculum I've just got that piece of keratin on the eardrum in focus I'm now using a fine end suction probe we're just entering the ear you can see we're just hovering over it he actually <laughs> removed some other keratin that was not actually in view, the suction probe there. So we're going to go back in. And there we are, we've got it in focus. And we're slowly going to just peel that away. And you'll see um, all these little shards of skin was quite uncomfortable for the patient. Um, and as soon as we removed it, they felt... Uh, a lot better, they, they don't feel any itchiness in the ear. So this is on the anterior canal wall, quite medial near the eardrum. So I did spend a bit of time with the fine end, just vacuuming 
this loose debris. So again, this is all dead skin. And in this particular patient, the skin, as it dies, it's not really shedding and it's crystallising within the ear. And that, that piece there is a good example. It's like a shard of glass. So every time the patient's moving the jaw, it's a bit uncomfortable. This is a bit of a tricky bit to remove because it was, it was still attached to the canal wall. It wasn't loose and I had to really peel it. It took me several attempts or a couple of attempts, should I say. So again, just got the fine end, just got it in focus. You can see that where it's adhered. The patient did slightly find this uncomfortable. Um, so you've got a fresher layer of skin that's still attached to this, but in the end we did manage to remove. See, we're just trying to tear it away, break it apart. Again, so just dilated the ear with the with our speculum. And you can see at the top uh, we've got a slit there, and that slit it enables us to it gives us more uh, range of motion within the instrument, and also because that slit we can insert the instrument at a high angle, which therefore doesn't uh, obstruct the the line of view with the lens of the camera and our wax scope. So it doesn't become blurry, so we can really see with precision what we're doing. This is some dry skin on the back part of the ear canal, again, quite medial. I'm just hovering over. So all this is very deep uh, up against the eardrum on the latter third of the ear canal. So you can see the eardrum already, it looks nice and healthy. You've got a lovely view there, very magnified. But it's just some keratin still that I'm going to just peel away. I'm going to just adjust the focus in a minute just to get this a bit more clearer. There we are. So the Waxscape, uh, if you are a clinical ear care specialist, it's due to be launched in early autumn. So if you are interested, do please email info at clearwax.co.uk. And of course, we're still manufacturing our flagship product the the eye clear scope endoscope um, if you're watching on social media and if you want to be uh, watching the eye clear scope in action uh, just visit my youtube channel just type in the hair clinic and conversely if you want to uh, watch some more youtube videos on using the wax scope please just uh, uh, when you enter uh, log in into YouTube, just to search Clearwax and you should come up with our Clearwax channel. And I'm using the Clearwax YouTube um, channel to more advertise our, uh, the wax goat. Of course, if you're um, on Facebook as well, you can, I'm on my, the hair clinic page and Clearwax page, you'll see videos of both the wax goat and the eye clear scope. So this is some dry skin just at the base of the ear canal that we're removing. So it's on the inferior aspect and it's probably more mid canal. So we're just going to get the view. So it's quite tedious this last bit, but it's well worth removing. You may have seen that just as I went into the ear, just on the outside, the patient had been scratching the ear uh, because of the itchiness caused by all this dead skin. Again, just having one last view of the patient's eardrum. So that's the hammer bone, that malleus, you can even see the capillaries on the hammer bone. There's a stunning view there. So this is the patient's left ear, and again, it's this keratin had crystallized. This is probably more stone-like. It's even more hardened than the right. And you can just see that color. It's, and that's all built up in nine months. We see this patient every nine months. And this one is much more did. Uh, the patient felt this ear was more comfortable as well. You can see this plug has expanded uh, and it's now compressing against the canal wall. So there's no open seal there. There's no opening, widening. The patient's just got this 
hot, almost like a stone in the ear, and the stone's getting bigger and bigger, and it's compressing against the canal walls, and it's creating a complete seal. So once more, just using the speculum just to dilate the ear canal. Just having a good nosy around. And again, I've just gone into the hook, and you can see the angle I went there. I just glided it into the slit, and then once I'm through the slit, I rotate it counterclockwise, anticlockwise, glide it. In this instance, I went to the roof of the ear canal. And you might have just seen there, when I pulled, this, um, pulled the hook through that, there was a bit of a, a juggernaut action there. So this it broke um, some of the seal created by this hardened keratin, and a piece of keratin came out. But it was still quite lodged, so again, inserted the hook, glided it in. And it's just so hard, I couldn't embed it, so I'm just trying to get in and behind now. Just the gap opening at the top there. So I'm just trying to get into that gap. So in and behind, I'm trying to dig it in and come forwards. We're just going to be careful when we bring come forwards with this hook. We don't want to lose. Um, control over the hook and accidentally injure the patient's ear canal with the tip of the hook, which can easily happen if you're not careful. So you are got to ensure, especially in cases like this, when this wax and keratin plug is extremely hardened and it requires a lot of force, that you're just very careful. So Again, I've just got into the core of this. I'm now bringing it forwards. The entrance is quite narrow. But slowly but surely, we are bringing this forwards. And again, I'm just using the speculum just to straighten the ear here, just to widen the entrance. Yeah, just come back out the hook. Just want to really widen the ear. I want to go to the back part of the ear canal here and just take this away from the back part as it's really impacted there. So I'm just chiseling away at the back, just loosening it up. Then over the roof. And although the plug hasn't come out, I have chiseled it into little pieces. So I'm going to go back in with a suction probe in a minute just to... Just suction up all this debris, loose debris that's around the concha bowl. So sometimes uh, with a hook, um, you're using it in combination with the instruments. You're not necessarily always extracting the wax. You're just chiseling into little pieces to enable you to remove the rest of the wax. Now, in this kind of case, you couldn't just remove this just solely using microsuction. That's why as a clinical ear care specialist, you, you need to be competent in all instruments, not just the suction probe. Um, I'm aware that some people are just using suction and they're not really comfortable or are able to have been trained using any of the instruments. And it's very important that if you are a clinical ear care specialist, you, you need to be able to remove um, wax, um, not solely reliant upon Microsuction, it's just a case like this is a perfect example. You wouldn't have been able just to remove this just by using microsuction. You have to get the patient back after a few days of using drops and potentially again several times just to really. And sometimes it just this doesn't really soften this kind of keratin. You just you're going to be struggling and having to um, just to refer the patient onwards. So, uh, with, when we were developing the waxgate, it was all it was developed in such a way where we whereby we're optimizing the use of instruments as well, all instruments, not just microsuction. So I'm just trying to go to the back part of the ear canal, and this is where the speculum does help. You can see I've just separated that. There's no space at the top, but I've managed just to maneuver it so it gets over and behind. And I think now I'm gonna just revert back to the suction probe, we shall see. And 
just like the patient's variety this ear canal is quite narrow and just going to be once more a bit a bit trepidous here because you don't want to be pushing this keratin plug further in so i'm just looking for a suction grip and just removing some keratin from the top part of the plug I'm just straightening and stretching this a bit more with the speculum. And I've just found a spot here where I can position the suction probe and I'm just slowly teasing this forward now. I think it just gets trapped. So I brought it forward, but it gets trapped at the air canal entrance, but I have mobilised it. And I think, again, I'm going to potentially use a hook just to Extract this on the roof. There we are. I'm going to go over and beyond and just want to glide the hook in behind, which I have now. And then I'm going to bring it forward gently. And that's the main occlusion removed from the left. So we're just going to mop up some dead skin. There's a bit of skin. This is just um, very lateral on the anterior canal wall. We're going to peel this away using the fine end. And in fact, the last piece of skin does actually come away. You can see it's going all the way to the eardrum there. And it wants, uh, like the rest, like this in the, the patient's right here, that piece of skin is very hard and crystallised. So we're just going to change the focus just to visualise the patient's eardrum. Again, you can see all the capillaries there. So you've got a fantastic magnified clear view. And with this particular patient, as I say, I'm going to try and remove as much debris as possible. You can see this crusted layer of dead skin at the base of the ear canal, so I'm going to peel this away in a moment using a fine end. I'm just getting it in focus. I've got uh, some artitis externa, uh, some eczema psoriasis of the ear canal. They have got some prescribed um, antibiotic spray from the GP, which they're going to use now once we've removed all this. So just using the fine end, just going, it was very strongly adhered, so I'm just trying to get the fine end and tussle this away from the back part. I want to separate this. Now, removing this is not going to improve the patient's hearing, but it, the skin's not going to come out by itself, unfortunately. It's... It's dead, it's, it's, it's just attached itself to the canal wall. So we want to just remove it for that reason. And this can cause a bit of itchiness in the patient's ear as well, this kind of really crusted skin. I'm just using the fine, I'm just trying to get in and behind the skin and then curl it. And as I curl it, we're peeling it away. That's been removed. That's the patient's eardrum. Again, nice and healthy. And that's all the debris removed from both ears. So you can see it's quite a big haul there. And I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you are interested in the wax coat, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.